Hello, welcome to another Photoshop tutorial. In this video, we will be focusing on removing objects from your image using a few different tools. So let's start. In this video, I will be doing the complete post-processing for this image. So if you're just here for removing those objects, then I suggest to check the chapters of the video. Let me start with the raw adjustments in the camera raw editor. In the intro you have seen this was a very warm shot. To achieve this look I'm going to first change the profile to Adobe Landscape to get some more base saturation. Now in the basic panel I do want to adjust the white balance a little bit, making it warmer. Just like that it's already enough. Then let's bring up the shadows to get some more details from the darker areas as well as the blacks. And increasing the blacks will lessen the contrast and thus this gives us a little softer look which I think works quite good for those sunrise shots. Also I want this image to be saturated so let's bring up the vibrance. Perfect. Then let's go through the local adjustments real quick. I'm starting with the sky and you can see here I do have a sky selection and on that sky selection I subtracted a linear gradient so on the left side where the sun is coming in, this filter won't affect anything at all. I'm going to use this and make the right part of the sky a little darker by bringing down the exposure. Just like this. And I also want to bring down the blacks for a little more contrast in there. And doing this will increase the saturation. So I'm going to drop this as well. Perfect. And then let's make this top right part a little more bluish. So I'm going to drop the temperature. Now I do have a radial gradient for the glow effect on the left side. Here I'm just increasing the blacks. Then let's also bring up the temperature to make this glow a little warmer. I'm going to boost it quite a bit for this heavy golden look, just like that. And to make the glow effect stronger, we can drop the dehaze. Just like that, perfect. And then there's one radial gradient left, just for the foreground. Here I do want to have more detail in those wooden planks on there. So first off, let me bring up the whites. Then I'm going to increase the texture. And I'm adding a little bit of clarity as well. Perfect, that's it for the local adjustments. Let's go through the color grading real quick and I'm starting in the color mixer. First off, I do want to bring down the orange saturation a bit. Just like that. And the blue saturation. All right, and in the luminance tab, I also want to drop the blue luminance, which will make the sky a little darker again. Let's work on the split toning. Here we will apply this very strong golden look. With the highlights, I'm going to apply a yellowish tone. Let's see, just like that. And by increasing the saturation, we will get a very, very warm image. So I'm going to boost it a lot in this case. Perfect. And let's do the same for the midtones. Again, I'm going with a warmer color tone. This looks pretty good. Let's again bring up the saturation just like that. And finally, in the calibration tab, I do want to bring down the blue primary hue. Just for some more intense color tones. Let's drop it quite a bit. And I'm also boosting the saturation here. Perfect. The last thing I will do in the camera raw editor is the sharpening, of course. Just like that. Now let's open it up in Photoshop and finish the editing. And at this point, after the raw adjustments, I always start removing objects. The very first thing I'm doing is to check for sensor spots. And you can see there are a few up there. Those are easily fixed by just using the spot healing brush. Adjust the brush size and just paint over them and they are gone. That's pretty straightforward. 
and I'm just checking through the image and making sure to remove all those dots. Of course, this is not only working for sensor spots, but other things like small rocks or like this thing in the water right here, which I want to get rid of. Or like small trash laying on the ground. Everything is easily removed with that. But now on to more complex objects. Those lampposts are pretty annoying for this shot and I could try to remove them with the spot healing brush as well. So let me just paint over it once. I'm making it very, very roughly. You can see it kind of works, but if you're looking closely, there is some leftovers, which I think will ruin this image. So let's undo this. In this case, to remove those lampposts, I am going to use the content aware fill. But for this, of course, we first need to make a selection. And here I'm using the polygonal lasso tool and I'm just creating a selection close to the object I want to remove. I do keep a little bit of distance to it just to be safe. And once we have made our selection, I'm going to simply hit Shift F5 and select Content Aware and hit OK. Now you can see the lamppost is gone and we don't have any leftovers which will distract. So let's continue doing this for the other lampposts. Again, I'm starting pretty close to it, but also leaving some room for error. And I'm trying to be very, very precise here. Just for the sake of the video, I'm going through this a little faster than I would usually do. So now we have made a selection, but there is a pretty big area in that selection which we don't want to change. Up there in the menu, you can see I have activated the subtract from selection button. That means if I'm creating another selection right in here for the area we don't want to change, we are going to subtract that from our selection. Just like that. And with this active, we can now again hit Shift F5 with the content aware still selected and say OK. Again, it worked perfectly. Then let's get rid of the two last lampposts. Again, just using the lasso tool to make a rough selection. Then again, once I have done outlines, I'm going to subtract parts from the selection, which we don't need to change just like the sky right here inside those lamps. Okay, and then let's hit Shift F5 again and select Content Aware. Okay, looking much cleaner to before. Now let's start working on the little more complex objects. And I'm talking about this pole right here. And for this, I think I'm going to use a mixture of the Content Aware fill the clone stem tool and the spot healing brush. Let's first try to remove a few wires using the spot healing brush. I'm going to brush just once up here, then I'm holding down the shift key and click somewhere down the wire to draw a straight line with the spot healing brush. Just like this. And you can see this works really really good for those smaller wires. So I'm trying this on the other side as well. Brush in up there once and hold down the shift key and click down at the bottom of the wire. That did work as well. So let's try to remove the top part maybe. And you can see for this pole I'm going through step by step. I'm not removing all at once. For the top part right there, I think the clone stem tool would work pretty good. And what this thing does is I can simply copy an area and pass it wherever I want, just like using a brush tool. Right now you can see I have my brush outline. If I hold down the Alt key, I can select a target area just right next to this pole. And by left clicking, I'm making sure to copy this area. I'm letting go of the Alt key. I'm just moving the mouse over this pole. And now you can see what the clone stem tool has actually copied. And then I'm just painting over this area. 
that I can also paint downwards. And the clone stem tool will just use the area from the right side of this pole as I'm going down. So that's very, very helpful for more simple surfaces like skies or something like that. Down here it gets a little more tricky. There's a small layer of fog right here. And I want to copy this area and just drag it over this pole and connect it to the layer of fog on the right side. So with the clone stem tool, I'm again holding down the Alt key and select an area from the fog somewhere around here. Now I'm just again placing it over the pole and I'm carefully brushing over the pole. Just like this. And I can also go up again or down. This, the clone stem tool definitely needs some time to get used to, so don't worry if it doesn't work the first time you're using it. This way I need to carefully just remove this pole right there. Slowly working my way through it. Okay, starts to look a lot better. Down here there's the really hard part. Now for this area I'm looking for similar areas around this part. So again with the clone stem tool I'm copying an area from right here. I do need to adjust the size of the clone stem tool a little bit. And again let's copy this part. And now I'm just printing it right here. All right, almost done. So if you're looking closely on this spot, you might still notice something is off. And that's because we do have a warmer section on the left side, while on the right side, it's a little more grayish. That's because of the different light saturation, but I think that's not a big deal. Again, I can just use the clone stem tool, copy an area from the bright part, and notice how I drop the opacity of the clone stem tool to just carefully paint in some subtle warmth to this area and thus get a more natural gradient, just like this. But next, let's continue working on this wall right there. All right, perfect. You can see this was a little harder and time consuming but by using a combination of the spot dealing brush and the clone stem tool, it was still not that hard to fix. Let's see what other objects we can remove. Those wooden poles coming out of the water are a little distracting. And here I think I will go with the content aware for again. So let's use the lesser tool once more to make a rough selection here. And of course, I'm making sure to also select all those gaps so Photoshop has an easier time to fill the selection later. Let's hit Shift F5 and hit OK. All right, this looks a little strange, but don't worry. Again, we can use the clone stem tool to clean up things. And I'm just copying an area from, from the left side of this weird looking patch. I'm just painting over this part and fix it easily. All right, perfect. So I just saw the leftovers from up there from the pole we have removed. I do want to fix that as well. In this case, I want to make the whole sky a little smoother. So I'm going to select and say sky. Uh, well, this sky selection is not that accurate so let's use the quick selection tool and just remove a part of it. We don't need the whole sky anyway. Just like that. Okay, that's looking better. Then let's hit Ctrl C to copy this sky selection and Ctrl V to pass it in a new layer. And on this new layer, I'm going to hold down the Ctrl key and click on the thumbnail to select the sky again. And I'm going to filter, blur, and here let's say motion blur. 
I'm just adding a little horizontal motion blur to this image just to get this nice looking long exposure look. Okay, and I'm going to hit Ctrl D. And just to be sure, I'm going to apply a layer mask, use a black brush, and I'm just brushing along the landscape edges right there. So we don't have any motion blur in the mountains in the back. Perfect. And you can also see the leftover part from the pole removal is now also invisible. And that's pretty much it for removing some unwanted distracting objects from this image. This topic might have been a little boring, but I hope it still was helpful. But for now, let's finish the post-processing for this image. For this reason, I'm going to apply a new layer. Let's switch the blending mode to soft light. Again, I'm using the brush tool and I'm using this soft light layer to paint in a little more glow on the left side. Here I'm picking the color tone from the sprite area. But I do want to make it a little brighter to get a more intense glow, just like that. And let's drop the brush opacity to not make this too strong. And now let's paint in some nice big glow in here. Perfect. And finally, I'm going to merge all those layers and then let's check the Nick Collection plugin. So what I want to apply here is mainly the glamour glow effect. Let's restore the saturation. Let's maybe make the glow a little warmer even and reduce the glow itself. Okay, that's looking pretty good. I do want to add a negative control point just for the foreground since we don't need any glow in here. So just like that. Perfect, let's apply it like this. All right, and here we have the finished image. So I hope this whole tutorial was helpful and interesting. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comments and thank you very much for watching this video.